If you struggle with learning CW and have you finally decided to buckle down and learn it, you may have heard of the Moore Serino 32. Is this that thing that will finally get that code into your head? Let's find out if this is what you've been looking for to help you along your Morse code journey. Welcome to the House of Ham. I'm Bob, amateur radio call sign WV7W. The Morse Arena 32 is a Morse code training device, but is this the best way to learn CW? I say yes and no. It's a great practice device once you know the characters and have achieved instant character recognition. That being said, I do not think you should use this to initially learn the characters. I feel that you're much better off to use a club or group that can provide you some classes and support. And take it from somebody who initially learned code the wrong way. You'll be much better off to do it right the first time. It is so much harder to try and unlearn bad habits like counting dits and daws. I still struggle with that today. Learn it right once, and you'll be much happier. Now, organizations like the Long Island CW Club or CW Ops are two of these organizations that have a proven track record of teaching CW to people just like you. I've provided links to both of these great resources in the description. Now that we got that out of the way, the Morse Serino 32 is a great practice device that can help you along your CW learning path. And I will go over the features as well as how I use the device. I only use a few of the features, but I will do my best to cover all the bases so you have a good idea of what it can do. So let's go around this thing and let's uh, talk about what the different pieces are. So um, you've got the, um, the ESP32 module. Uh, you'll hear a lot of people call it the Helltech module. That's because that's the brand name of it, it's Helltech. But it uh, has the ESP32 microcontroller as well as a Wi-Fi. Um, that's what this little co coil is, is actually the Wi-Fi antenna. Uh, and then it's got uh, long range, uh, or LoRa. Um, and that's what this little uh, connector over here it goes to this. Um, I'm not planning on using LoRa. I don't have anybody that I could use it with. But conceivably with that, you could communicate between one or more of these uh, um, other more Serino 32s. And then you could carry on a QSO. Um, and I think LoRa is actually good for a couple miles. So if you had a neighbor or something and you wanted to chat via CW, you could actually do that. Um, I will use the Wi-Fi um, to do some stuff, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. So, um, so that's the, uh, uh, you got the uh, the encoder knob, um, and it's also got a button in it, uh, and a red button. Um, the antenna connector for the LoRa antenna, that is only for LoRa, Wi-Fi is through this right here. The speaker, and then there's an on-off switch up here, and then there is a volume pot for the headphones, and then there's another volume pot for the input-output um, volume. And so um, that's how you can bring audio in um, to decode. And it'll also send audio out, like if you wanted to use this for a training device um, and on like a Zoom call or something like that, if you're in the Long Island CW Club or one of the others, you could use this to feed the audio into, into your computer. Uh, this port over here allows you to connect it to a radio, and it will actually key your radio. Um, so you can use the internal keyer in here to key your radio. And then this port over here, and you see there's a cable connected to it, is for paddles. And I'm going to I use these uh, little C W or uh, C W Morse U S um, paddles. Uh, these are some of the paddles I take in the field with me. I really like them. Um, and these here are paddles. They're touch sensor. Uh, capacitive, touch sensitive, and uh, I find them to be a little bit uh, fidgety. So, although I do use them if uh, this is, if I just have this, but uh, understand that they don't always work as well as a traditional paddle. And I'll give you a demonstration of that in a minute. So let's go ahead and turn this on. Okay, and so um, it, you can come up into the uh, and so the first mode it comes into here is the echo trainer. Let's go here to the C, we'll start at the beginning. So the CW keyer, and that is just exactly what it says is it keys CW. 
and you can set the speed of the keyer um, with this knob here. Or you can use, you know, your own paddles. And then it'll display what you're sending up there. So that is the CW keyer. Now to get out of any mode, you just press and hold this and it'll go up one level. So the next one is the CW generator. Now notice it has these two dots down below the, uh, the mode that it's, it's on and that means that there's submenus to this. So if I click this, it'll go into the submenu. So we can generate random characters, uh, CW abbreviations, English words, call signs, or a mixture of those. And um, there's also a file player, and you can actually upload um, files to this, uh, text files, and it will actually send those. So you could either do a practice file, or if you wanted to listen to the text of a book or something, that's entirely possible. You can do that with this. And then back to random. So it, when you do this, let's go ahead and go to like English words. It'll send, a, send three V's and then a, a KN, or KA, I'm sorry. So it sends at the speed that you've got, and you'll notice it has the number and then a smaller a number in parentheses. Um, so the number that's to the right, the bolder number, is the speed that it's sending at. Uh, the actual character speed. The one in the parentheses is the um, effective speed. So if you're using Farnsworth spacing, th those will be different. So that's the CW generator. Next is the echo trainer, which is one of my favorite modes um, because this one really allows you to hear it and then send it back. And so, um, and so it'll send you either, um, same thing, you know, it's got the, you know, send you random characters, um, CW abbreviations, English words. So let's, let's do English words. You know what? I didn't even pay attention. <laughs> Let's see. Got it right. <laughs> Close. So that is the, uh, the uh, echo trainer. So next we'll go to the Koch trainer. Um, I don't use this one myself and um, I would not use this as your sole use for learning Morse code. Um, now when you can use this or when you should use this is if you're doing classes either through Long, ICW, Long Island CW Club or CW Ops and they recommend using it, then I would. But there's, you know, the G4FON software or uh, Learn CW Online online tool, I think are better options for you to learn the characters than this. Once you learn the characters, there's some things you can do. Um, and that's where the um, Echo Trainer and things are really good. Um, but as far as actually using this to learn your Morse code, I personally recommend against it. There might be others that tell you to do that, and, you know, don't take my word as gospel. But uh, anyhow, so if we go into this, um, same thing, you can select your lesson. So the lessons, you know, start with, uh, you know, particular characters. So if we select lesson, you know, uh, all the way at the top there, but if you go down, you can see which letter. So M... K is number two, R is number three. Now, 
once you're working on a particular lesson, particularly if you're doing it in a class format, you can bring it to the whatever lesson you're on, and then it'll play those, and you can listen to them. So it, particularly if you just want to listen to them and get them ingrained in your head, you know, it might not be a bad thing for you. Um, so, and then, uh, you know, to learn a new character, it will basically just play that character. So it gets it ingrained in your head. So, um, and then of course it has the same CW generator stuff that the, that the, um, in the CW generator portion of it. It's exactly the same thing, but it's using the actual Koch um, lessons. Same with the Echo Trainer. So that's the Koch Trainer. Now, transceiver, this is where you get to the two different transceiver modes. So you got the LoRa transceiver, which would use this antenna. Um, like I said, I've never used it. Um, I don't have anybody I could use it with, so I can't even test it and see if it works because I don't have anybody. I've only got one of these, so I can't even try it out. Um, and then you've got the Wi-Fi transceiver. Now, to set the Wi-Fi transceiver stuff, you have to do that with a connected device, either a computer. Um, when I say connected, I mean through Wi-Fi. Um, there's no way to set the um, Wi-Fi settings or even the uh, servers that you want to connect to directly in the interface on this. You have to use either a computer or a mobile device that you connect to the basically the web page that this sends out. So the way that that works is you would go to the actual um, um, settings of this. I guess I need to get I need yeah, uh, and then you would um, then you could go in and set that. And once you've done that, then you can go in um, and use this. And so just as an example is um, we'll go ahead and go into this um, to start with QSO bot you basically send a QRL and a question mark, and then it'll come back with a K. And that means it's connected. And then you can send a, a CQ. I won't stay on that, but you can see that you can practice QSOs. Now, the one thing you have to do is you have to, at the end of, once you've signed off and done your 73s, to start a new one, you have to do the QRL question mark again. Otherwise, it will not, it will not start another QSO. Um, and the next one is CW Decoder. <laughs> this one confused me a little bit. So the only thing that you can do with this, other than listen to some Morse code, um, either through the input, um, or you can uh, do basically straight key. So, because um, the, the paddles themselves are only, they act as a straight key. Oh, once you select it. So, 
this is good if you want to practice your straight key uh, capability. And here again, um, I, I really like the uh, the CW Morris US um, devices. Um, I've got a regular, you know, J38 straight key, but I really like this one too for for portable operations. So. Um, So that's how you can practice your uh, your sending with a straight key and being able to see what you're sending. It's pretty persnickety, as you can see. Um, you know, an operator would have been able to pick out my call sign, but it didn't quite get it. So um, it is kind of picky on how it does that. So that is the decoder. Now, Wi-Fi functions, that's where you would go in and you can set your Wi-Fi stuff. So if you go into this, um, you can display the MAC address of the device. Um, you, but when you go to configure Wi-Fi, what it will do is it actually sets up um, a hotspot, a, a, a Wi-Fi hotspot, and then you connect to it, and then you can go and uh, and make you know changes to the Wi-Fi configuration. And there's there's a several different um, you could set up for several different um, Wi-Fi locations. So if you wanted to play with it at home and at work, you can actually set up two different ones, and then you can select them. Um, you can check your Wi-Fi. So it says it's connected to my to my Wi-Fi hotspot, and it gives the address that it has. And then you can upload files. Um, so like I said, you know, if you want to be able to copy uh, some text in a text file, you can actually bring that in and, and, and listen to it. Um, you can update the firmware. So you have to have downloaded the firmware to your computer, and you do it through that as well. And there's instructions online how to do that. And then you can select which Wi-Fi. So if you have multiple Wi-Fi's, you can actually use this to select which Wi-Fi hotspot you, or Wi-Fi connection. I've only got the one right now. So, but if there was others, you could go down and you could select, you know, the others as well. So it looks like there's three of them. And back to the display MAC address. And then the last option is to go to sleep. And it basically puts it to sleep. Now, um, I've got a battery in this. And so I always turn it off because I don't want the battery to drain. This is just a battery I got online. Um, and he has uh, instructions. In the instructions, he has uh, some recommended ones. Um, if I can find it, I will put the link of the one that I got. Um, but it seems to work really good and lasts a long time. And you can charge the um, battery with the USB connector on the ESP32 Heltec module. The Morse Reno 32 is a great practice tool, but don't look for it to be your one-stop shop to learning CW. If you're looking for that magic solution to beating the code, this is not it. The truth of the matter is, the only things that will get you there is putting in the time and persistence. Also, as soon as you can do it, get on the air. Nothing beats true on the air time and you can do it much sooner than you think. And this is where a club with good mentors can really help advise you. CW is a lot of fun, and this is a very cool device to use as you're learning it. Thanks for watching. I do appreciate you sticking with me to the end. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button. And if you wanna see more, hit that subscribe button so you know when my next video comes out. Until next time, 73s.